Hello, Fran here at New Testament Explained. Um, as always, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you are not already. Now, if you've been watching uh, my other videos on topic 5.1, quite a lot of the emphasis has been on um, when the kingdom of God is going to arrive according to the Gospel of Luke. Now, this video is still going to look at the Gospel of Luke, but the difference with this video is that we are going to look at key themes that emerge within the Gospel. Namely, we're going to be looking at judgment and repentance, righteousness, defeat of evil and social outcasts. So our first uh, theme in Luke's Gospel is that of judgment and repentance. And this centres around the idea that entry into the kingdom of God um, is not cheap and it is not easy. Um, those who don't repent will be left out. It's kind of the bottom line of it all. Um, when we hear the word repentance, we often think of apologising for wrong actions. But in this context, what we mean by repentance is changing your life for the better. Um, it's not necessarily a doom and gloom attitude. It's, it's one of hope and the idea that if you're ready for the Lord, you will enjoy his favour. So repenting is something that we should see uh, with positivity and with hope. Um, in Luke's Gospel, um, again, we get this notion that the kingdom of God uh, will be one in which its members are transformed by the Holy Spirit and that the goodness of God will be written into the hearts of those who enter. Uh, and that again, because the um, repentance is all about changing your life for the better, all nations have the opportunity to share in it. It is not an exclusive kingdom. In terms of where we can see these themes in Luke's Gospel, um, on all of these um, themes, I will not be listing every example in Luke's Gospel. I'll just give a couple of examples that align with Anthology 5, which again is part of the Edexcel, Edexcel specification, uh, so that you can see where these themes can be detected. So in the narrow door, we get the line, once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door. Now, that initially fits in more closely with the idea of judgment, that was going to be a time where God will decide whether you enter the kingdom of God or not. Uh, but again, that decision is based on repentance. And if you read the remainder of this Bible passage, um, you get a description of what happens to those who do not enter because they have not repented. The second passage is the coming of the kingdom of God where we get the line, for the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. Now, the point of this passage is that we can't know when the kingdom of God is going to appear. It's going to be so quick and so almost unexpected in its arrival um, that what we must do is repent kind of in the present moment. We have to live as though the kingdom could come at any point. And it kind of emphasises that we just kind of need to repent naturally as we go through our lives. We cannot sort of wait for a point when we want to repent later down the line. The second thing we're going to look at is the concept of righteousness. And this is the idea that you essentially do things by the books, you do things properly and you don't sort of cheat your way to getting what you want. And not only is the kingdom of God going to be righteous, but the way in which it is reached also has to be righteous as well, i.e. the people who want to enter the kingdom of God have got to be righteous in the lead up to their entry. And what we kind of get here is an elaboration of what we mean by righteousness. So the temptation to worship the devil was the urge to use evil means to either gain possessions or to gain power. And Jesus rejects these consistently. Um, a kind of more modern day example of what we mean by sort of worshipping the devil to get what you want or doing evil things to get what you want is that some Christians have used evil methods, methods such as tor torture, if I can talk, um, to make people convert to Christianity to try and establish the kingdom. So it's this idea that not only is the kingdom of God a righteous place, but in order to enter it and in order to bring it about, everything has to be done by the book. You can't cheat your way around it. So therefore, everything about this kingdom, especially how it is reached and how it is established, has to be righteous. In terms of where righteousness can be detected in the Gospel of Luke, then, we've got three Bible passages. 
Jesus and Beelzebub, the narrow door and the rich and the kingdom of God. And the quotes on the slide are all examples of people worshipping superficially. The technically um, worshipping, so in the rich and the kingdom of God, we've got the man who has kept the Ten Commandments. In the narrow door, we've got the people saying that we ate and we drank with you. But the point in all of these passages, including Beelzebub as well, is that superficial worship is not enough. In order to gain entry to the kingdom of God, there's got to be a genuine moral correctness about an individual. Um, you can't just sort of cut the corners and kind of play the game in terms of doing what technically you've been told to do, but not genuinely committing to yourself. Uh, and you can link these passages to John's prologue, um, where we get the concept of believing in Jesus and kind of committing yourself fully to that belief, um, which is ultimately kind of what righteousness is, is a genuine um, investment into worshipping um, Jesus and into gaining entry into the kingdom of God. A third theme in Luke's gospel is defeat of evil. Uh, and what we mean by evil is anything that is destructive to the physical, social, spiritual and mental condition of mankind. Because that is our definition of evil, what we mean by defeating evil is to heal people in their minds and in their hearts. Now, in Luke's gospel, as I'll have noted in previous videos, um, there is an idea of cosmic drama where the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan are sort of battling it out on earth. And therefore, in instances where we see healings, uh, namely exorcisms, you can see the kingdom of God um, becoming more and more prevalent as it defeats the kingdom of Satan. So again, what we mean by the defeat of evil is healing people in their hearts and minds. And the most obvious passage um, to use in support of this is Jesus and Beelzebub right at the beginning of the passage where Jesus is driving out a demon that was mute. Um, so that is the most clear example of defeat of evil emerging as a theme in the Gospel of Luke. The final theme then is that of social outcasts uh, and ultimately the idea that the kingdom of God um, is not exclusive to certain people uh, but actually open to all if they are willing to repent and be righteousness. So you can draw links between the different themes. Now outcasts that appear in the Gospel of Luke include the poor, sinners and Gentiles. Um, so Luke is quite radical in his attitude towards the poor uh, in that poverty is considered an evil that needs to be overcome in order for the kingdom of God to be established. And a scholar named Marshall says the following quote, in the teaching of Jesus, the good news of the kingdom of God was for the poor and there were stern warnings to the rich about the danger. We also then get sinners who are a social outcast who um, upon repentance could gain entry into the kingdom. Um, Jesus, in many passages, heals sin, um, which is the greatest evil of all. So again, through repentance and through forgiveness, um, this group can gain entry into the kingdom. And finally, uh, we get Gentiles who are non-Jewish people. And Luke does emphasise throughout his gospel that the kingdom of God um, is not exclusive to Jewish people, uh, but in fact, open to all. Um, this could be seen as a reflection um, of Luke as an author and the fact, the fact that when he was writing the international character of Christianity hadn't quite been recognised. So there are perhaps uh, reasons for that um, that relate to when he was writing. But nevertheless, we've got three groups here that are social outcasts um, that could gain entry into the kingdom. In terms of examples, um, social outcasts, we get the parable of the sower, uh, we get women who had been cured of evil spirits. So again, this idea that they were sinners who are with uh, Jesus. We get the parable of the great banquet is perhaps one of the strongest passages to use in support of this theme, that once those who are invited to the banquet uh, refuse their invitation, that the owner of the house says, go out quickly into the streets and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. So this idea that uh, entry into the kingdom um, is not, um, cut off for those people they can enter as well. At that point we have finished looking at four key themes that uh, emerge in Luke's gospel when exploring the kingdom of God. 
thank you for watching. And as always, if you are not already subscribed, uh, make sure you do so. Thank you.